So moving on now, we're going to move towards our sharing the best practice part of the uh, the event. And we're going to start with Richard from uh, Disby Medical Practice. Over to you, Richard. Thank you very much. Hi, everybody. My name is Richard Moss. I'm a physician associate. I'm based at Disbury Medical Centre in South Manchester. And this is just a bit of an overview of the lipid clinic that I'm involved with and, and how physician associates can be involved in, in delivering care when it comes to managing these patients. So next slide, please. OK, so really what we were looking for with um, with this particular clinic was to find a way that we could implement all these different strategies that that can be used for managing patient lipids. And initial kind of the advantage was having somebody that could see them that maybe had a little bit more time to go into some patient concerns and could explore some of the, the different management options that were available. So next slide again, please. Okay, so when it came to what we were looking to get out of the clinic, uh, so from, from the point I from when I inherited it, it was making sure that we had up-to-date patient clinical information that we could use to make a clear decision on what medication was suitable, whether they provided, what, again, making sure provided the appropriate lifestyle guidance, and then having follow-ups in place. Uh, next slide, please. So these were the, the main barriers to achieving those goals. When we did the initial search of EMIS patients, there were very, very few patients that had um, up-to-date clinical information. A lot of them had uh, out-to-date blood Q, Q risks and uh, BMI. So these were longer than 12 months without follow-up. And um, a lot of the bloods that were done, it was incomplete screening profiles and there were no clear reminder systems. And so these were the things that that through this clinic we were trying to challenge and, and find solutions to. So next slide, please. Okay, so these are the initial solutions we had thoughts about when it came to paying the clinic. Um, it was changing some of the search criteria that we had available, optimizing the search terms, and uh, also kind of looking specifically for things like a risk scores. So one of the recent developments is uh, when we've been using EMIS, we have taken on Ardens, and that's been very useful for finding other patients that may have been missed before. Again, trying to improve our patient communication for follow-ups, so more targeted AQRXs and flurries, emails, phone calls, letters, trying to really trying to get patients back in and, and make a good effort to chase them up. The same with the uh, same with the reminders as well. Um, as far as data collection goes, I was looking to do uh, some quality improvement based on my experience with the clinics. So the um, format I use was something called Airtable, which we'll come to a bit later. Very similar in Excel to how it's how it's set out. And then for using and obviously how we're going to use this information to improve our current service. So looking looking at looking at an audit, looking at quality improvement, and then communication of the findings through our monthly meetings. So next slide, please. OK, so this was just a, a bit of a structure of uh, of what sort of things I'd be asking within within the within how we do the, the appointments itself. So usually the appointment time is about 15 minutes in total and that extra bit of time gets gives us the opportunity to do some cardiovascular screening to look at to speak a bit about family history, to have a good discussion about medication, how they're using it, how compliant they are, what sort of side effects. Again, if there's any if there has been any previous use of statins, then we can qualify again if they've stopped, why they've stopped, have they had any adverse reactions any genuine intolerance so we can investigate if there has been anything coded and whether that code whether that code still applies likewise if they've had a previous referral from the lipid clinic whether there are any um, recommendations that we need to add on uh, the last hour review was where we got where the benefit of the extra time was seen so again we could look at the factors like diet exercise uh alcohol smoking and sleep as well so all these factors together would give us a good overall picture of patient level of risk and what sort of interventions that we could make that we could personalize to that particular person so next slide again please so when it came to um things that we had at our disposal for decision making there was the um there was the resources. These are the ones that I would generally use when it came to helping make decisions. So Heart UK, Dietetic, Dietetic Association, NHS website, and um, different things that we can that we can use to bring in to share information with patients as well. The medications that were that were commonly used when we were when we were seeing these patients in clinic. 
again different statins uh, azetamibin glycerin very new and uh, that we we're currently just getting the list together with that uh, the practice i work at has had some involvement with the spirit trial so it's something that we're that we're working towards um initiating this in primary care and then just some of the uh, some, some of the guidance we go off for, for the clinic referrals as well so next slide again please so uh, i think everyone has probably uh, already seen these resources already uh, these ones that uh, again i discovered through um again manchester health innovation had a really useful uh, pack that that had most of these in um the one i did find that was maybe slightly different was uh, some more specific guidance on triglycerides and that was uh nottingham that actually did quite a good one and really simplified it when it came to making decisions between starting someone on a statin versus starting someone on, on a fibrate so that was really useful as well uh, next slide again please so this was uh some of the air table i was talking about before kind of and this is really how i was collecting the data as i was going along all this is anonymized but really want to what i wanted to have all in one place was pertinent blood results again bmi's blood pressures uh, next slide please and then uh, information on whether they'd had the correct screening bloods up-to-date clinical information if we provide them with the appropriate lifestyle when it came to making uh, decisions about medication if they declined a medication whether this person was for primary or secondary prevention and then some information about the medication that had been that had actually been started if somebody had had a, a statin start in the past we were able to see quite quickly using this if it had been stopped and when and why it had been stopped next slide please so uh, this also gives us some information as well about how we kind of found some of the patients that were on spirit studies, lip studies, and um, really kind of um, helped when it came to tracking how much time we were spending with these patients as well. Because because one thing I was always quite concerned about was that we were having uh, a good impact in the um, in the available time that we had, and one of the things that was increasing the number of consultations or slowing down the process was people having up to date. Uh, was people not having up-to-date clinical information so this is a way that we could clearly keep track of that so when it came to things like quality improvement we had some elements of a time and motion study as well as potential effectiveness of the treatment that we were carrying out so next slide again please so as a physician associate i work under supervision because i'm a non-prescriber so um i have a name supervisor that manages this clinic so um when it came to managing things like uh, prescribing medications, normally what I would be doing was sending uh, an individual task through to someone who was supervising me, um, stating that we'd had a discussion about the risk versus benefits of starting the treatment and that we'd obtain consent for the patient to start the relevant medication. And then also for things like any particular troubleshooting problems that came out as part of doing the, the consultations for patients with complex problems, polypharmacy, patients who maybe needed lipid clinic referrals or who were intolerant in the past so normally people who were had come onto my clinic but may have been outside my scope of practice to manage independently the next slide please so these were the main barriers that really came up and this obviously kind of is partly due to experience partly due to role and scope of practice as well but being a non-prescriber finding ways to um, initiate these medications smoothly again coping with um, patient resistance to medication so um, I think everyone's going to have a slightly different experience when it comes to starting people on a medication but there are the very specific challenges to managing people in this area we're, we're dealing with um, not just people that have read things in the media that were negative about statins as well but but people who were maybe in a cohort that was retired and uh, was were well educated and had taken it upon themselves to do an, all, an awful lot of independent research on on cholesterol and statins and and um and how best to management and how best to manage how best to manage those issues so so that it was a real challenge speaking to those patients and again things like uh, at the moment i'm just over a year qualified so and i was within a year qualified when i started the clinic and and it's uh, building my knowledge and experience as i'm going along and learning how to deal with those patients and learning how to best deal with the risk appropriately and uh, likewise with the complex patients on the right it was identifying those that were 
that we're going to be potentially challenging her outside my scope of practice from a uh, decision-making point of view when it came to starting medication or when it came to um, sharing information and uh, and counselling and education because there were quite a few patients that I've spoken with that wanted to have discussions about um, evidence bases that were beyond that which was contained in the guidelines so managing the expectations of the, those patients was was quite difficult so next next slide again please so uh when it came to looking at what we i think we've achieved in the time frame since we've been doing a physician associate like clinic is we've been able to incorporate a new manner of collecting data on patients that way we can follow up and, and look at the quality of service that we're providing and try and optimize that we have some more structure in place with how we follow our patients up and the reminder systems that are in place to do that as part of how the uh, clinic runs there's more time that's given to exploring some of these lifestyle factors patient concerns and symptom screening as well this has been quite a so this has been quite a useful clinic for maybe turning up other cardiovascular issues that might have needed further investigation that hadn't been addressed before so it became quite useful for, for maybe catching things before there came a problem and then using this to try and um, engage with patients and give them the tools that they could manage them manage their own condition themselves alongside the medication so that way there's uh, there's a, an optimal approach that's delivered so next slide please Okay, and that's and this is just really summarising kind of some of the lessons that that we thought that we thought of and the improvements and ways that we could get there. So, looking at improving my own communication skills when it came to having difficult discussions with patients, when it came to risk management and the importance of being on the appropriate medication and the appropriate lifestyle factors and and um and then using kind of reflection in practice so things like case studies reflections mini cases to, to look at what i was doing consultation why see where i could make improvements and then build on that with uh, a better understanding of the evidence base that's currently present so next slide again please all right so that's me all done hopefully that was useful for everybody to hear how a physician associate can be used in primary care to, to manage this patient type Thank you, Richard. That was a really comprehensive presentation and also it's an excellent service that you're providing for your patients there at Disbury. So thank you very much for that. So we're running slightly behind on time, but I think listening to these presentations is really, really useful. So next up is Dr. Carly Gardner and Fiona Mendel from Broughton PCM. So if I could give you the floor. Hi, thank you. It's just me, I'm afraid. So sorry to shortchange you. My name is Dr. Dr. Carly Gardner. I'm a GP partner at Newbury Green Medical Practice in Broughton. And with my other hat on, I'm also one of the clinical directors of Broughton Health Alliance. And we were asked to present regarding what we've been doing with lipid management, lipid optimization. I thought I'd talk about what we've done so far and also our, our future plans. I think you'll see that we haven't really done anything that revolutionary. It's mainly been about little steps and QI principles and um, sustained effort over time, making the best use of our resources and taking opportunities like wealthing, working with Health Innovation Manchester and um, the other external resources that we've been able to come across. So for context, we've got about 55,000 in our population and there's some quite intense pockets of deprivation and lots of health inequality and diversity within our population cohorts. About 25% of all CBD related deaths in the UK are related to high cholesterol. And we know that for every one millimole reduction in LDLC, there's a 23% reduction in major vascular events. When we looked at Eclipse for our patients, um, we found 2,185 with CVD risk over 20%, which I thought seemed a little bit short given we you know that in deprived areas there's higher rates of CVD and um, we'd expect poor, poor lipid control and high CVD risks. So it's likely an underestimate. Um, next slide, please. In terms of our team structure, we've got a couple of pharmacy teams under the R's um, services for the PCN, the NIPS team and also TPN. We also have our practice pharmacists, a PCN medications lead to help coordinate things and a PCN support manager and operations manager who've all been involved in trying to um, spearhead things and, and champion improvements in this area. Next slide, please. 
So in terms of tools of success, I talk about the um, external ones first. So we've been working with Health Innovation Team, Health Innovations Manchester, and also the Interface um, team of external ph pharmacists, which is funded through Novartis, a drug company that does Inclizaram. Next slide. So the aim was for the, um, a project to be developed with um, support, this external support, so that we would have better lipid optimised pathways for primary and secondary prevention based on NICE guidance, G triple and G as well. And that it would be risk stratified to work through the backlog post pandemic and COVID, um, trying to manage chronic diseases. And the high intensity statins would remain the first line medication as per the guidelines. We'd have a standardised approach to statin intolerance because we realised we weren't doing that across the board. And the eligible patients would be considered for novel anti-lipid therapy like in Kuzaran, as we've been hearing. So next slide. The aim would be that we would have a, a specific workflow regarding lipid optimization using this external pharmacy team that there would be a 12 month duration to this additional support, um, which would be funded through Novartis. Search tools in order to know who to target was supplied by Health Innovation Manchester. They help support us with that. And we came up with the four cohorts. Um, so prioritizing cohort one and cohort four, we felt these were higher risk. Next slide, please. Um, when we searched our, oh, sorry, can you go back? <laughs> Yeah, that one. Um, so cohort one is um, high Q risk and not on a statin. And then we found 231 patients who had a, a high risk, so over um, 20% um, and not on a statin. And then cohort four were people who are maxed out on our existing therapies and still not well controlled. So eligible for enclizaran potentially. And there was 291 of those. Next slide. The interface offer. So this external pharmaceutical um, group, cohort one, they're going to do some remote reviews for us, telephone consultations with patients, therapy recommendations, and then for it to be actioned by a nominated practice prescriber. So we felt that was really important that practices would still have autonomy and oversight of what was going on. And cohort four, um, in interface would do a face-to-face -face review so that's um a bit more specialized regarding inclizaran discussing the pros and cons as has been mentioned it's a novel therapy we don't know about um the long-term implications of it the um the benefits over time and, and potential risks perceived risks and so on so um having informed consent with patients and that face-to-face -face interaction and appropriate counseling to make sure that it's right for them um, and then it would again be actioned by a, a named prescriber ultimately from the practice. Next slide, please. Integration. So the way that we'd kind of make it work with all of our practices, there's about eight of us across the PCM. We've had um, practice education sessions for the teams, including stakeholders, practice managers and the prescribing clinicians follow-up focused PCM education sessions for the PCM pharmacists and practice nurses and we'll continue to do that. We've been linking in with other practices who are currently prescribing in Kuzaran that have been um, highlighted to us by the health innovations team. Process mapping with interface um, that how the clinic will will run um, the telephone and face-to-face -face. and our PCN operations managers on medications lead um, who is helping with um, sort of targeting and auditing and coordinating and then the pharmacy team leads for each of the practices as well. Using very much a QI based approach, PDSA cycles, we're not expecting it to be perfect to begin with, we'll just keep looking at it and refining and a nominated prescribing lead as I've mentioned per practice with a designated work stream. 
something else that um, is going to be key and pivotal to um, any kind of lipid strategy is our PCN pharmacy team meeting. So at the moment, we have a monthly meeting. It was initially fortnightly and we managed once we got things up and running and under control to extend to monthly. And we do it um, with a rolling agenda that includes all of the IIF dashboard and strategy discussions, smart goals with a focus on team achievements. And our Q risk, um, Q risk over 20% and on statins um, is currently, um, at the time of doing this presentation, around 72%. So we're doing quite well um, in terms of the targets. Next slide, please. PCN education programme. So another tool internally that we've been using is bi-monthly pharmacy and nursing team education sessions. And the topics have been based around the key performance indicators and tackling health inequality, working sessions with the pharmacists and nurses for sharing best practice and getting them to network with each other, building a sense of team and camaraderie. And we even have a WhatsApp group to continue that, which they've been using. We've been circulating um, grassroots generated protocols, so growing our own leaders and champions in this area and including CBD risk optimization annual review templates. We provide lunch as well um, as part of that. And um, it's been going really well. I think that's one of the key things that's been helping us with our, our high um, achievements in this area so far. Next slide. We've also been making use of the ours roles because we'll all have this problem capacity and you know the demand on our, our time and how do you make space for doing everything that you need to do. So um, our ours pharmacists have um, been taking part in some practices in a pilot of chronic disease appointments um, slots. So they will see patients and do chronic disease reviews and they'll be referred into those slots by chronic disease admin teams. Um, it'll be tasks from GPs um, and the GPs are briefed on what the pharmacists are capable of doing according to flowcharts and best practice that's been agreed at, at PCN meetings and part of what they can do is um, sort of um, as part of their SMRs looking at, at lipid optimization. Also opportunistic screening of Q-risk, um, so our PCN, farm tax and pharmacists are doing that when reviewing other conditions and designing other than accurate pre-appointment text message template to support decision making regarding lipid management. That's mainly just flagging up to patients. This is a statin because a lot of people have um, certain misconceptions and it's good that they can read through in advance and it just preps and makes sure that the consultation goes a bit more smoothly. So our TPN trainee pharmacy technicians, TPN is one of the um, companies that supplies our, our services in pharmacy. They audit and do list maintenance and care navigation. And that's particularly useful around Q-risk and also Chad ST VASC scoring. They've been really helpful in these areas. Next slide. The challenges, I guess, would be um, the same um, as, as always, change management and limited resources and just thinking of ways around that. There's been particular challenges in this project with perceived and actual risk regarding Inclizaran, and we've just tried to do a lot around um, education of the staff and listening to concerns and um, working with our secondary care providers, so local hospitals um, to um, consultants in lipid management to come in and, and talk to us about um, optimization and make sure that we're all on the same page and people feel comforted by that, I think. And you know, um, going through the GMMG guidance and making sure every, all the practices have a copy of that. And the other challenge, I guess, in a way, you're a bit of a victim of your own success because um, we were having quite a good baseline and we're still hoping to work on it. But we just keep referring back to what an important area it is in terms of morbidity and mortality and preventing those strokes and, um, and heart attacks. Um, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Carly. That was really, really good presentation again. And I think it's really important to see the partnership working you've got going there and your PCN working together on all of this is fantastic. So lots to learn for other areas across the system. So I know we're, we're at 10 past six and we should be on the Q&A, so I'm not doing a great job of chairing this. 
but um, we've got George now from Bolton who will uh, talk about what they've been doing. And then um, I promise in terms of the, the questions on Slido, if they're not answered, we will, we will be answering all of those questions and sending them out to all the delegates that have joined today. So don't worry, we will be answering all the questions. But George, I'll give you the floor. Um, yeah. and I'll press you to be as quick as you can. Thank you. Those that know me know that that's a very difficult task, but I will do my best. So uh, my name is George Ogden. I'm a, a GP. I'm a uh, PCN uh, clinical director in Farnworth and Kersley, and I'm also chair of a GP federation in Bolton. Uh, so I got involved in uh, this work about a year and a half ago uh, because uh, it, 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 it was a tagline, really, that uh, we, we need to be actively managing uh, lipids, just like we actively manage hypertension. Uh, uh, and and, uh, and I must admit, a year and a half ago, my view on lipid management was points and press. Uh, you know, uh, it, somebody in secondary prevention, they had a cholesterol and they went away and nothing happened. So really, my uh, uh, takeaway uh, at that point and going forward has been we do need to actively manage these people and uh, the slide at the very beginning saying uh, how, how that the, there is a gain to be made here uh, in terms of patients so uh, what we did is uh, we uh, looked at working with the system so we worked uh, with Health Innovation Manchester to uh, look at the searches to validate the searches so uh, we've been doing that for about a year 18 months um, we've had uh, Health Innovation Manchester come and visit our PCN now uh, on uh, three occasions really just to raise awareness of the pathway raise awareness of what we were doing so uh, that we're, 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 we're getting that in uh, uh, we've uh, I think we've then uh, talked about coming out to practices and been out to practices uh, and 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 raise their awareness of of, of the uh, of the pathway uh, and and what we're going to do we've used uh, the the whole idea about this is to try and normalize this lipid management in in in, uh, in our normal care so uh, we've got uh, we've used our pcn admin resource to do a shared uh, resources but we the delivery is at practice level so this is at what scale uh, you should do what and we think uh, the uh, searches and the identification of patients probably done at PCN level and uh, uh, running uh, and going out to the delivery is at a, a practice level and we've been back again uh, very much like the QI process that's been discussed uh, it's PDSA what are we doing how are we doing it and it, it, it we've gone around various uh, different uh, modules of doing that can you move on so the practice delivery uh, is really uh, I, I think it, it, those of you who uh, are new to this will uh, will not understand the cohorts uh, the cohorts one and four are the people who uh, have had a cardiovascular event and uh, not on a statin cohort one and the people who've had a cardiovascular event and are on maximal uh, uh, oral therapy and uh, potentially uh, uh, suitable for novel therapies. Uh, those were the two groups that we thought were the were our uh, initial targeting group. We thought those are the two groups that we uh, initially gained <coughs> would uh, 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 would uh, additionally benefit from. And so, with those, we've actively targeted those uh, 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 using texting system. We've sent out the edu education uh, uh, leaflets, including information on uh, in glycerin because uh, the uh, not on a uh, not on a statin uh, a lot of them are intolerant or of choosing not to take a statin so in clistrin becomes an option for those uh, both of these groups uh, move on now so the the next approach is thinking around about how do we incorporate the uh, the management in of the other cohorts in our routine care so this is about education 
about its active management, around about uh, having uh, appropriate statins and appropriate dose of statins for the people that are, that are on uh, that have had cardiovascular events. And that's been part of our nurse education. And they're bringing that up and using that as part of the normal annual review process and using the target two and three uh, as part of the uh, 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 the uh, the system and we've used uh, our, our reminder system we're basically a system one uh, based PCN so we're using reminders to flag the patient cohorts and the actions that are required move on so uh, we've done it we uh, as I say we've been involved in it for 18 months we're at the it probably now at the we are at in, in fact at the implementation phase it's taken us that long to get there uh, uh, we're going to try and roll it out across the other PCNs I think it's been a continuous process we've got it wrong on multiple occasions uh, uh, and, uh, and and tried to get it wrong particularly for us it's been uh, because we were quite early into this was was the case finding tools and validating the tools and understanding which tools were appropriate and which patients were appropriate and the other thing as it's been already alluded to is making this a priority uh, with other measures that we're we're, we're doing so uh, it, it's not easy to do but uh, i think uh, i go back to the first slide we were showing today about what are the gains of doing this so our role is to think around about population level uh, uh, case finding and individual delivery, uh, incorporating this into what we're doing in our standard practice.